a region of mystery. Is there then a region of mystery where no human eye can penetrate? Our character and endowments are products of the unsearchable working of the Holy Spirit, dividing to each severally. The Spirit has adjusted the divine thoughts to one another and to our free thoughts among the mass of unassimilated material to effect the divine decree. There is much joy given us if we can correlate the implications of your supreme thought which fill our soul. For the knowledge of you is erectable, but is rejectable, as all men are flooded with it and choose to tear it down. Thus do we build Babylon, but place you in a tomb of the earth. Amos brought to our minds the absolute energy of your divine justice. Hosea, the tenderness of your covenant love, notwithstanding our sin. And what accounts the grandeur and richness of the scroll which Isaiah has unrolled? The one distinctive vision to which all of us turn is the temple, the throne, the seraphim, the altar, an unalterable mix of your glory. And we could wish it were we who were suspended there in time. This we shall have in eternity. Your manifestation of your high and lifted up glory is the fundamental aspect of every utterance or discourse we have been given. All bears the one personal face of you. The entire unfolding of your counsel and all your works are here shown. We may have the dim vision, but have not the powerful feelings impressed upon Isaiah. Our first view of the glorified Christ may be the potency which provides us continuous vision of God. Isaiah saw that there is God and that everything else is not God. Your absolute divinity contrasted to the rel relativity and dependence of created existence the great antithesis, God and not God. Your personal presence everywhere separates you. Isaiah's appearance here was the temporary glimpse of you, nonetheless devastating. Ours will be permanent, eternal, unshakable. In your midst, all creation covers and humbles and effaces itself. The seraphim, highest representatives of a higher world, themselves feel and hide in their profound, own profound insignificance. You are the one supreme reality from which all else derives its significance. You are specifically distinct from all other being, in which our idea of you gains a peculiar ascendancy and pervasiveness. The passion of this laid upon us runs past the bland terms we use, such as omnipotence and omnipresence. We will be given an expanding thought of you which fills all the recesses of creation, and there is no place left for any other being except as a medium for reflecting the divine glory. Yet there is more than this because every space is filled. We are given to live within you, you within us. Your train fills the temple. The whole earth is full of your glory. The house is filled with smoke. For did you not burn and sacrifice all your being for us? So also is your glory unquenchable. Lord, give us to be ever in this presence, which is the meaning of all things. Amen.